three, two, one. Boom! Damn a mad nasty trapping coming at you again. This is gonna be the first video in a multi-video series. I've gotten quite a few requests lately uh, from trappers asking random questions. Everything from the very, very bare bones basics all the way up to experienced and detailed questions, okay? Uh, so I did a lot of thinking and a lot of really laying this out and I figured it was about time that I started an instructional video series in true mad nasty trapping fashion. I'm gonna bring you the lengthy, detailed instructional videos from start to finish, from very, very basic beginner, never touched a trap in your life, aspiring to be a trapper, to bringing on guest speakers that are very experienced trappers that can answer the extreme fine detailed questions that you guys periodically come up with, okay? So this one right here is gonna be the first of a multi-part video series. This right here is very, very basic intro video on how to get started into trapping and what to expect. This is the bare bones for the person that is just getting interested in trying to decide whether or not they want to make the jump into learning and being a trapper. Okay? So, in true mad and nasty fashion, as always, I want to welcome everybody. A lot of my longtime viewers, you might want to just wait for, I don't know, episode four, five, and six in the series. But for all the guys that are brand new to this, this, I hope, will be the best video available to getting you guys started. Now, I am going to run this start to finish. And at the end, I will review any questions you guys have. Uh, I, I do want to stay right to the point and not lose any viewers' interest. So keep questions going. Uh, and at the end, I will go and answer as many as I can. Uh, I also want to keep it entertaining, guys. I don't want to be a drag out, boring, monotone, this is traps, this is your skinning, this is your fleshing and boarding. Have a nice night. I'm not like that. I'll throw a little bit of twist up in there because I'm fun and I like entertaining and I am an entertainer. So uh, keep your questions going here, guys. And uh, I'm going to get this thing rolling. I'm going to get started. Okay. First thing I've got, I've got everything laid out here on the table and I've got it broken down into three basic areas. Okay. For the basic beginner trapper that has absolutely no materials and supplies and is just starting to get into it or has an interest and wants to learn, this is your basic setup. This is your basic setup to get yourself out in the woods and catch your first critter on the line, how to go and skin it, and what supplies and materials you need to go and get this off to fur market and auction. Okay, so here we go guys. First and foremost, every single, every single state has different laws, okay? Make sure you read your laws, regulations, and rules. Some states are more strict than others. Uh, I think, in my opinion, Michigan has some of the strictest laws out there. If you can trap in Michigan, my opinion is you can trap almost anywhere. But make sure that the first thing you do before you set a trap, before you start buying your materials and supplies and getting into this, go to your local sporting goods store and get your hunting law digest or acquire your law book, okay? 
So here in Michigan, it looks a little bit something like this. Michigan Fur Harvesting Digest. Here in Michigan, it consists of about 26 pages of laws. And that is no joke, guys. They are fine print, 26 pages of law. Know your laws. Don't get caught up breaking them. There's heavy fines and, you know, stuff that goes along with, um, goes along with um, getting caught breaking the law. Let me see here, guys. I'm going to try to clear up my video. Video quality cleared up. Okay, that's better. All right, so when it comes down to trapping, guys, uh, three basic areas of supplies that you need and three basic stations that you can set up separately in which you have to go and, you know, store your materials and your supplies and to get um, your furs from the woods all the way to final product. Okay, step number one is going to be your traps, your baits, and your setters. That will get you catching. It's not the only step. Once you catch them, you have to go and skin them. And then you have to do the fur processing. You have to get those furs ready for sale to the market or ready to go to the tanner to get tanned okay so going down the list um safety 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 is first and foremost beyond your laws if you get injured or hurt on the line your season is done be safe out there there are multiple safety tools and safety procedures to follow while out in the woods it's important and as well as skinning and fleshing and boarding there's different safety options available and my suggestion strongly is that you guys use them beautiful so let's let's keep it a little bit entertaining here guys and let's go down the rip okay number one first things first everybody wants to know what traps and trapping supplies do i need to catch it's the most fun part of this right I don't think so. I like the garage work. I like the prep of the furs and the final product. But the trapping is, to most people, the most fun part. And what we look forward to um, along the lines of what deer hunters do waiting for opening day of deer season, we do the same thing for trapping. It's awesome. And you will soon see, as a beginner trapper, once you get your first one or two catch, you're going to love it. And you're going to be addicted to it and you're going to continue to do it every single year and you're going to be looking forward to opening day like the rest of us so a uh, couple of basic styles of traps there's many many different brands of trap there's many different styles of trap each coincide with the species and laws that you plan on trapping my personal opinion is that the basic, basic line of trapping should be your fundamentals of catching. And that is trapping your possums and raccoons, okay? We all want to go gung-ho, jump into it, get bobcats and otters, martens and fishers, badgers, and whatever other high-end hideout coyotes, fox. We all want to get these. But you must set forth the basics first. So everything I've got up here is to run a basic raccoon and possum line to get you getting animals and to get you through your final product of fur and get it off the market. Okay? Now, two different styles of traps. Actually, there's three different styles of traps, but these are the two most common and easiest for the novice beginner just starting fresh with no experience. These are the two most basic easy traps to get catch and set easily with basic knowledge. Okay, First trap you got, and I will go over the individual traps in my future video series on how to set, use, the differences between them and what primary targets are for each of these styles of traps. But for the case of this in the beginner, 
raccoons, possums, this is your basic setup from start to finish, okay? This right here is your dog proof, also known by us trappers as DP. DP stands for dog proof coon trap, okay? It consists of a spring loop, a hole in which the raccoon will go and reach into, a trigger pin inside there, the bottom, that trigger pin, in which will set off the trap, your spring, and your loop. Chain, swivels, and trapping tag, okay? Every trap you have must have a trapping tag. Follow your regulations, it's important. Don't get caught up. Um, so this is a dog-proof trap. My suggestion is running your first line that you have anywhere between four and six traps to start off with. That will keep your materials and supplies to a minimum and still get you catching, okay? So this is your dog-proof coon trap. They do make an available setter tool to help assist in setting this trap. In a future video, I will demo how it is set without the setter and with the setter. But, running anywhere between four and six of these DP traps and one or two setter tools is essential. That is your basic get them in the trap. Your second style of trap. Many of you guys, even your novices, have seen these. These right here are your conibear trap. Again, follow your laws and regulations as to what size is to get. This is a 220 conibear trap. Springs on the outside, your trigger in the middle, and your dog underneath. This trap right here is fairly easy to set and I have set up a basic method in which I call the Mad Nasty Trapping Michigan Legal Bucket Set for these traps. This right here is your setter tool. Your setter tool will assist you in setting these conibear traps. Not a necessity, but it sure makes the job a whole lot easier. These traps right here, practice safety first. Do your research on how to be safe with these traps. These traps are extremely dangerous and if caught in a conibear trap, it's not a good situation. But that is all you need for your traps. Six of the conibear traps and or six of the dog proof DP traps all right so that is that now you will need for your dog proof traps your DP traps um, of course I'm not you know not pushing any brands here but what I use on my line is the bait to fill your DP traps to attract your target species, this time beginners, coon, possums. I use in the DP sets dry dog food. Whatever is cheap, whatever has high meat content, any kind of meat content will work. Um, dry cat food works even better. A little more expensive, but works even better. As much fish content as you can get, either dry dog food or dry cat food. Fill your trap to the top, or some guys recommend, don't. I, I fill it to the top. I've never seen a coon pass up on a meal. So I, I fill it to the top, and I throw a little bit around it for a little eye appeal. And I've always had them where they kill it all the way to the bottom. And I will demonstrate how these are used in a future in a future class here. But you know, you're gonna fill your trap up just above the trigger in the inside with your dog food bait or your cat food bait. Your bait is your food that attracts your target species. 
Then you want to go and top it off with a scent attractant or a lure, okay? My preference is a product made by Taylor's Trapping Lure. And this one is in particular called Little Bear. I don't know if you guys can see that right there, but that's called Little Bear. And I place this upon the rim of my DP set. So halfway, dog food or cat food, this, just a drop or two right on the rim of your trap. It's a deadly combination. That will get you possums. That will get you raccoons. So, there's that. I talked about the Michigan Legal Bucket Set for 220 Conibear Traps. You make them on your own. This consists of a five gallon bucket. This also consists of a lid or covering. I already have a video up on YouTube channel, Mad Nasty Trapping an instructional video on how to make Michigan Legal Bucket Sets two-part series. It's up there on YouTube channel, man. That's a trap and check it out. But that's that. And when I set these bucket sets, again, bait first. I use sardines. They're cheap. You can get them from your local dollar store. Place those in the back of your trap and attach them to the back wall of your trap. And that compiled with Michael Taylor of Taylor's Baits Lures and Trapping Supplies. You can get them on Facebook if you want to believe me and try this product here. This product is called Little Bear Taylor's Baits and Lures on Facebook. That's what I use. Put a little bit on the rim here or take a small stick or branch in which you can place it side of the trap. You know, dip it in the bottle, have a little bit of wetness of this product on the side of there to give them the scent attractant, bait attractant on the inside. Whammo, you got yourself some coons and possums. Very, very basic. And that's why I say, guys, this is the way to go for you, you novice first-time trappers. If you've never trapped in your life and you want to start getting catch quickly, that's the way to go. Oh. Uh, that concludes segment one of traps and trap supplies. Actually, no, I lied. Trapping wire, wire cutters. They're important to attach your traps to the ground and or to a tree. Also, I knew I forgot some stuff. You can never have enough you can never have enough trapping wire. Get a spool. If you are running six of the dog proof traps or six of the Conibear bear traps, my strong suggestion would be to get two trapping stakes per trap. Six traps, 12 trapping stakes. Okay? And in future broadcasts, on uh, future lessons, I will show you how to double stake these traps to make them less likely to pull out. So within with in having to double stake, two stakes per trap, six traps, 12 stakes. Pretty basic. I hope you guys are taking notes. I got a lot to go over with you. Trapping wire, this right here comes in different gauges of wire. This trapping wire that I use is 14 gauge. Nothing in particular, no really rhyme or reason why I do it, but I use 14 gauge because it's the most available on store shelves in my local area. And I like buying product and having it in my hand immediately. It's a good thing. So, trapping stakes, wires, setters, kind of bears, DP traps, hunting law or trapping for digest law book. That is what you need to get you catching. That right there will catch your target species, coon or possum. Sorry guys, I got thirsty. Now the fun begins, okay? I gotta keep it entertaining, y'all. I mean, for all you guys that haven't seen Mad Nasty Trapping, I'm on a whole different level. I love teaching, I love instructionals, I love answering questions for everybody, and I love all of my fans, followers, and viewers, my new guys, and my old 
timers, the ones that have been around. And you guys are all absolutely fantastic. Okay, next. The next setup here is the essentials for skinning. Okay? Mad Nancy Trapping says this. If you're going to skin your critters, you must first have the mindset to skin. A nice big pile of catch. Essential. Now, step number, I don't know, two. Who gives a shit? But, oh, let's see. To get in the right mindset to skin your critters, gotta have them. Get yourself a couple of cold ones. Notice I did it in this order. You don't do it while you're trapping. No, no. Dispatch, firearms, and alcohol is a big no-no. But once you get back to your fur shed, garage, your grandmother's basement, it doesn't matter. Firearms and boomsticks and toys put away. We can be in a safe environment and celebrate our catch while we skin. Grab yourself a couple cold ones and crack them. And enjoy it because this is the celebration after the catch in the wild. <laughs> so you get your livelihood from your beers. You get your buzz on from your can of chew. Got to. And don't be spitting on the floor. Don't do it. That's right, here's Mud Jug. Mudjug.com. Sponsor me. <laughs> Anyways, get yourself a Mud Jug. Spit in the sucker and not on the floor because blood belongs on the floor. Not chew spit. Put that on a bumper sticker. <laughs> Anyways, so you get your Mud Jug there. You get your can of dip. And for all y'all smokers, stinky guys, doesn't matter. We're not deer hunters here. Stink it up. Who gives a flying fur? Damn. But make sure you use an ashtray for crying out loud. Don't put your cigarette butts on the floor. Only blood and fur goes on the floor. Mad nasty trapping said so. So get your smokes. I smoke these god awful things because they're cheap. But get your smokes and your fire starter. Okay? That gets you in the right mindset to skin. It does. It does for me. I don't know, maybe for you too. But, essentials. <laughs> Told you it wouldn't be your normal class. Normal's boring. I'm a whole lot more fun, aren't I? <laughs> so anyways, here we go guys. Here is your segment two. This is your skinning of your catch, okay? A uh, couple essentials here when it comes to skinning. Before you start skinning, you want to have yourself, God, these are God dang awful, but I don't care. You've got to have yourself rubber gloves, guys. A lot of these species that you're going to catch, especially in particular, uh, your coons and possums, more and more they're coming up with diseases. You get a disease from trapping, especially on an entry level beginner fur, low dollar fur in the fur market, it's not good. Spend a couple of bucks, get yourself a box of rubber gloves and protect yourself. It's about safety. So, get yourself some rubber gloves, make sure you store those. When you start, before you start skinning, an added step that I throw in here that I've been grateful for a couple of times over are cut resistant gloves. These ones right here are... Hell, I can't even read these. They're kind of old. But cut-resistant gloves. I don't know what brand they are. But you can get them. You can get them. Uh, grocery stores have them and stuff. Anywhere that sells knives and cutlery has them. But these right here have, like, metal weave to them. They're not cut-proof, but they're cut-resistant. And when you're skinning down after you have your livelihood of beverages... And you slip with your knife, you're going to be grateful you had these. It's not being a pansy to use these. Seriously, it's not. And it saved my hands a couple of times over already. So, cut resistant gloves, important. Um, knives. Many, many different knives on the market. 
Uh, beginners can start off with basically any brand, any price, and upgrade along the way. Okay? It's essential to have the materials and supplies laid out across this table, but whatever brand or price range that you can personally afford to do will get you from point A to point Z, start to finish. So don't be afraid to buy entry level product. There's nothing wrong with that, but you will see the downsides very quickly on which products you dislike because they are entry level and you can upgrade those as you feel frustrated and want to upgrade individual pieces. Eventually across the board, you're gonna upgrade everything. But um, for the beginner, any entry level product will do. Now, two of the knives that I use the most often when skinning my animals out is a, what do they call this? A, uh, this is what you see in somebody's tool or uh, fishing tackle box. Was that a fillet knife? I'm not a real big knife guy. I mean, I, I really am not, but I can use them and I can make it do the job. So, uh, I have upgraded this one slightly. I've had a 10 or 15 or dollar Walmart, whatever fillet knife. I think it's a fillet knife. Um, I've upgraded this one's at Kershaw. I love Kershaw. Um, I've just been very, very happy with Kershaw brand. But it's more expensive. It's a higher end brand. It's not way up there, but it's in, it's in the middle. It's a middle to high level. Um, you don't necessarily have to go out and buy this brand either, guys. That $15 one from Walmart will do the job. That's a fillet knife. This one right here, I believe they call this a paring knife. It's just a standard small knife. This one, I mean, you can go and steal one out of your kitchen and as long as you sharpen it, it should be good enough to do the job. I use this for your starting cuts or your money cut. And I use this for the more detail work. I will explain how each of these are used in my skinning videos that I will come up in future on this series. YouTube channel Mad Nasty Trapping has skinning, flushing, and boarding videos up already. Detailed instructionals. So if you want to go and jump ahead and see those, go ahead. They're already up there. But those are the two knives that you use most often. A pair of vice grips. Any brand will do. I know vice grips are expensive. You can go to Harbor Freight, whatever. Cheap junk whatever go to your grandfather's basement pick out the rustiest set doesn't matter but these are a nice touch to have when you have flounders and fails on your gambrel skinning racks this will clamp them up there hold them tight while you finish your skinning project this prevents frustration it's nice to have these are just standard vice grips guys right there you want to have at least one set sometimes two would be a you know a beneficial help Okay. Now, gambrel racks, many different kinds, chains, uh, coat hanger style. These ones right here, I've got like four of them up here. These are gambrel racks. They're fairly cheap. You can get them from your trapping supply company online. Any trapping store online should have those. They're right in the neighborhood of about, I don't know, $4 a piece or so. I like hanging multiple critters up and skinning them side by side. Whatever height you choose to hang it from, it's all personal preference. But a gambrel is a huge benefit to have, and it's fairly inexpensive. Make sure you get one. Um, knives went over. The Nurse, this is one where frustrations will happen. A dull knife for skinning will frustrate you beyond belief. Uh, many, many different types of sharpeners are available. Buy many. Buy many. Try many. Figure out which one you like the best. I mean, you can go and do it old style. Use a little bit of oil on a... I mean, you can go and do it old style. Use a little bit of oil on a sharpening stone. Your sharpeners are different kinds. This one right here 
has a two sided one's a ceramic one's a steel sharp ceramic one's a steel sharpener one's for you know coarse sharpening and then fine sharpening this one right here is straight ceramic this one works too um both of them fairly cheap i think they're i don't know this one's got a price tag on it of four dollars four dollars the only downside of this one is how close my fingers are to the blade it makes me nervous after a few adult soda pops it's a little bit better after a few adult soda pops but you know they have their upsides and downsides figure out what your personal preference is they're cheap buy many try many and you know whatever one you're happy with go with it um Tails, when you're skinning down critters, your tails um, are, a, are an area of frustration for many, myself included. When I first started off and I was beginning in this trapping thing, self-taught, self-learned, a lot of failures and a lot of failures and flounders happened. Um, I started to skin them and I tried to pull them down and it would like rip tails and they'd have nasty lines. I was already frustrated, less than 10% in. That's not a good foundation of a happy trap. Basic, easy items, guys, that are inexpensive, that have really helped me out, that are, in my mind, essential to minimizing the frustration in the first shed when skinning, okay? The first one is going to be what I call a tail slit guide it is basically a bent piece of i don't know aluminum tin i usually have three or four of these on hand in my box that i keep all my skinning supplies this is a nice product to have this slides down inside the tail in which you take your other specialty knife the zipper this is like $1.50, guys. This is like $3. It's got a little knife hook in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's got a little knife hook in there. When you slide this into the skinned out tail, you slide your tail inside the hole, and pulls out the inside the tail, and the flesh inside the tail pulls out very, very easily. This one right here is about $4. They make plastic ones. They make steel ones. They make fancy ones. You can go and have them engraved for wedding date. Who gives a shit? These are a very, very, very helpful item to remove frustration when skinning. The plastic ones, I've had this one I ran over. Cost me about $4, maybe $5. Um, that's basically it. That'll get you skinning. A little overview. Knives. Your vice grips, your sharpeners, your tail slit guide, your tail stripper, and your tail zipper. Stripper and zipper. And make sure you have yourself some heavy duty garbage bags if you plan on disposing of these animals and not consuming them or eating them. People eat possums, people eat coons. If you are not one of those people and you plan on disposing of them, make sure you have heavy duty drum liner garbage bags that aren't gonna rip or tear holes in them. These critters are heavy and they got sharp claws. They will rip basic bags. Get your nice heavy duty multi-purpose drum liner bags. And your disinfecting wipes they smell like lemons. Who wants to make it smell? Forget it smells good. I don't give a shit. And they're disinfecting. But essential guys that, you know, I'm a dirt bag. I realize this. I'm a filthy mother. I am. So I, I really don't use these all too often, but I do keep them up here because when my woman comes out and goes, man, it's filthy in here. I go, I clean. I don't know what the hell. And I have them sitting there cleaning. And anything else splooge on the floor, whatever, what have you, but it's essential um, to have them at least sitting there looking pretty. And continuing the overview, drinkology, 
Spittoon, mudjug.com. Sponsor me. Ashtrays. Smokes and fire. Cut resistant gloves. And skinning portion. Three parts of supplies and materials needed to get your first catch on the line. <clears throat> okay, so when it comes to boarding and drying your furs, all right, and the fleshing process, this is where it gets and you got to have specific items to do your job to get it the final product, okay? Um, my strong suggestion is if you run six traps, you are going to want to have enough boards to hang your furs and dry your furs. My suggestion is for every trap that you own, you have two boards per trap. So if you start off a small line with six or six DP traps, you want to have 12 boards. Buy them by the dozen. You get your boards. I know I forgot something else. You got your, you got your boards. Look a little something like that, guys. Okay? You got your boards. I use wood boards. I've also got wire stretchers. I prefer wood. Um, wood boards or wire stretchers. Whatever your personal preference might be. If you get wood boards, make sure you get belly boards. Get enough belly boards. One per board. 12 stretching boards. 12 belly boards might not even be such a bad deal to get yourself a couple of extra of these these are like i don't know 75 cents a box something like that but get the proper size belly boards this is a coon a standard size coon board that is what i recommend they have xl boards double xl boards they have small board get a dozen skinning board or a dozen stretching boards in standard size with your belly boards, a dozen of those. When you start flushing, you're going to want to have, this one right here can be purchased from your uh, trapping supply catalog. A lot of guys don't use them, but I'll tell you what, spoon fat, it's a pain in the rear to get out of your clothes. It's oily, nasty, stinky, greasy shit. It, this right here, it's 10 or 12 bucks. A basic one will do. They have mid-level, high-level, low-level, whatever. This is an entry level. And I used it all last season. I plan on using it all this season and the season after and the season after. Get yourself one. They're fairly inexpensive. It's a nice touch. Oh, uh, when flushing down your furs, these furs are greasy. They stink. The fat has oils and shit that smells like a coon. When they're greasy and covered in fat, they're still able to, you know, hang on to the fur without sliding too much. And they're only a buck. Why the hell not? What the buck? <laughs> anyway, and then I use these ones. These are, you know... Just standard gloves or fabric back, rubber bottoms, you know, to help fabric back, rubber bottoms, you know, to help help cut down on the grease, especially in the winter months when it's kind of, you know, when it's cold out and stuff, your hands get cold, you know, it's a whole lot, it's a whole lot nicer when you have a lot nicer when you have a nice warm set of gloves on that you can use when you go and you flush down your critters, okay? Um gripper clamps okay these gripper clamps you can use vice grips etc these are just basic easy it's like three bucks a piece you can get them almost any hardware store 
Um, it's good for gripping your furs. And when, I, when you guys watch my instructional videos on skinning and fleshing, uh, when you see my fleshing instructional videos, you'll see me use this quite often. You will see how nice this tool is to have when you're doing that process. These are inexpensive, guys. I think they're three bucks a piece. Might as well get two or three of them. I've got three of them. No. Man, there's nasty coon fat on this still. <laughs> I don't clean my shit. Why? I'm mad nasty trapping. Uh, when it comes to flashing knives, uh, there are very entry expensive high end flashing knives. Uh, I started off with the basics. Don't be afraid to start off with the basic, basic, the basic steel blade. And, uh, you know, it's about 15 bucks. Start off with that. If you're running a small line of six traps, you know, you may get 20 to 50, you know, 20 to 50 critter catch on your line your first year. That 15 to $20 Flashing knife, wooden handle, steel blade, you know, entry level novice flashing knife is okay for that. And you might like something that says you have to go top of the line and spend a lot of money. Uh, myself personally, I started off with an entry level one. I did that for about three seasons and it frustrated me. I don't like being frustrated. I like enjoying my hobby. When I'm frustrated, so I took that $15 flashing knife and said, enough of that. I'm dropping it because it's greasy as shit. Um, and I wondered, and what an upgrade this was. Hundred, and what an upgrade this was. I'm a big fan of the Necker 600. I don't know if you guys can see that there. It's greasy as I'll get out. But yeah, that's the Necker 600. I absolutely love this thing. I've really gotten used to using it after doing 90 plus coon on the season just last year. I bought this last year. Um, and I, I'm happy with it. I'm going to stick with it. This one right here. Highest dollar item out there. But this one I think was right in the neighborhood about 60 to $70 from your local trapping supply or online trapping supply company. Um, I believe you can get these with Michael Taylor over at Taylor's Baits, Lures, and Trapping Supplies on Facebook. I'm sure he can get you guys these. It's very common, and I'm sure he can get you the basic guys. He's a good, knowledgeable guy. He's got a lot of experience in this. He makes bait and lures, and the guy's got supplies for sale, reasonable prices. Oh, one of the other, so that, that'll get you to fleshing, okay? A little bit of recap, 12 boards, twice as many boards as you have traps, okay? You got six traps, 12 boards. You got 12 board, or twelve traps, 24 boards. You can see how all this is going to start getting expensive. <laughs> it is what it is. So a basic... It's not bad to start off entry level with entry level product and work your way up. You know, maybe when you get that fur check at the end of the year, you upgrade an item because we don't make a whole lot in this fur trapping game. You will find that out. It's not very lucrative, this trapping auction, but it's about the sport. It's about the hobby. It's about the tradition, not about the cash. But when you get that little check at the end of the season, Maybe you just want to go and, you know, apply it towards a case of beer and a new fleshing knife. Or a log of dip and another dozen boards. Yeah, use your fur check on that. Use it wisely and upgrade your gear. You also need a fleshing beam. I got my fleshing beam hanging in the corner. <coughs> Nothing special. It is, it's right here, guys. I have it hanging up. It is nothing. It is different, though, from your stretching boards. It, even though on video here, guys, it might look very similar. 
it's not. Get yourself a good flush. You can make them yourself, but they're fairly inexpensive. I think I paid $30, $35, something like that, maybe, for that flushing beam. I've been very happy with it. And I've ordered that one online through a trapping supply company. Um, make sure you get one. And ambiance. Oh, romantic, right? Space heater. Oh, uh, as silly as it sounds, if you have a fur shed, when you're drying your furs, there's a set temperature that you would like to ideally keep your fur drying area at. And I will review this again in future videos here, but my understanding of what I do is keeping your fur shed or your skinning and drying area, your skinning, flushing, and drying area at an average temperature of 50 to 60 degrees is the ideal drying temperature for your furs. To get them to dry thoroughly, fairly quickly, without damaging those furs by overheating them, and then being able to, you know, get them off the boards and then use the boards on new ones. Um, and I'll go into that process in a future video as well. But a space heater make sure that whatever you do to heat your area is safe and continuous you want to keep a continuous temperature in your drying area so keep that in mind consider that when you go to work you can't be fire you know you can't be feeding more and more and more wood while you're at work into your wood burning stove space heater it's good stuff Torpedo propane heater, probably not the safest thing when you're not at home. It dries your furs 24-7. Spend the money, get a decent one, make sure it has a safety shutoff if it overheats, gets knocked over, tips. Be safe, guys. Burned furs aren't worth the ash. Trust me on that. So that's it. That will get you started, guys. And always buy your trapping license. Follow your laws and regulations. Research your local laws first. That'll tell you what methods of trapping are legal in your area. Um, so that is basically that. Traps, trap setters, law books, baits, lures, essentials, beverages, smokes, dip, garbage bags, sums, safety gloves, cut resistant gloves, rubber gloves, beams, flushing beams, stretching boards, belly boards, flushing knives, aprons, space heaters, clamps, and grease-resistant gloves. So that right there concludes it, guys. That's your, that to all of you novice, basic, entry-level, want to be a trapper, the essentials you need. Let me see if it's focused again. Focus! Camera. <laughs> Anyways, so... Um, if I were to venture a guess, I would say that everything on this table, I could purchase for what I've got here, product-wise, brand-wise, and everything I got here, I think is right in the neighborhood of the $600 mark, pretty close, I would think, um, you know, you, you might be talking a little bit more when you start you know, accumulating traps. You, you get a half dozen traps. You, you might be in the six, seven, eight hundred dollar range right in there. Um, and that will get you your basic entry level trap line, get you catching critter, get you skinning critter, get you fleshing critter, and getting you final product that you can be proud of, that you can get off to auction, sell, and make a little bit of money in this game. And I can't stress it enough, a little bit of money in this game so there you go guys 
I'm Dan Edwards of Mad Nasty Trapping. YouTube channel Mad Nasty Trapping. You can get me on Facebook Messenger. I reply to every message. I love my fans, followers, viewers, supporters, etc. And I love getting you guys' feedback. And I love answering questions. So hit me up on Facebook Messenger, Dan Edwards. Instagram and Twitter, Mad Nasty Trapping. Snapchat, Mad Nasty Trapping. Okay? Now, I'm going to go and roll to... I think that's a pretty good basic overview series in which I will go in depth into the types of traps and I'm going to continue it from the bare bones basics all the way up to the experienced. Okay, let me take a look at some of these comments and questions here, guys. Um, this class is over. Feel free to go out and have your... So let me see if I can get back here. Oh, yeah, I got a lot of comments. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, I got a Hey Mad Nasty. I got uh, Hayden in here saying, Hey. I've got Ann in here saying, What's up, Dan? Uh, I've got uh, Jay Van in here says, uh, I just purchased two Conabear 110s. I can't set the damn things. Um, Javan, if you're still watching on here, the Conabear 110s are fairly easy to set, and they're very similar to the two. They're very, very similar to the 220s. Okay, I'll show you real quick. Uh, matter of fact, why the hell not? Okay, Jay Van, this will answer your question. This right here is your standard kind of bearer, 110. Looks a little something like that, buddy. It's got your trigger, what trappers call the dog. This is your dog, this is your trigger. And there's your spring, okay? Now, again, a lot of guys can go and compress them down like this. Ah! Screw that, okay? This is why I say having yourself a nice set of setters is a beautiful thing to have, okay? These setters are available at most sporting goods stores, trapping supply companies. These are very basic ones. They're about 11 bucks. You would take your setters and put them on your spring loops like so. Then that easily allows you to compress your spring. With your spring compressed, at which point you can go. Oh man, these don't have safeties on them either. Ah, shit. Once your springs are compressed with your setting tools, you can go and spring them open. Ah, oh man, these make me nervous. Then once they are sprung open, once they are sprung open with your setting tools in place, you flip the dog over the top and put your, keep your fingers clear, and put your dog in the notch like so. That right there sets your trap. So, these are essential, man. These will really help you out. And again, a lot of guys can King Kong it. They can go and just compress it by hand and yeah, I don't like to have my hands in the way of this whenever I can avoid it. So having a set of these 
as a reassurance of not getting whacked in the trap, eleven or twelve or thirteen dollars well spent. There's your one ten how to set. Okay, more comments, more questions. J Man says, I just set my DP actually in Alcatraz type. Yeah, like I said, there's many, many different types of DPs, many different types of brands. Um, they're all basically set the same way, fairly close, and I will have instructional videos on how to set each different style of traps, DPs, footholds, long springs, coil springs, uh, counter bearers, and uh, yeah, uh, I will have demos and instructionals coming up very soon on how to go and set bait and place traps each different style ronnie thompson says i want to be a trapper dan I, again guys i've had many requests for this i understand that a lot of you guys are experienced trappers this is a very bare bones basics video for anybody coming into it and that's what we need guys we need more entry level you know People that are interested in in this sport that haven't done it yet to take the first step into getting out in the woods and getting some catch. It's important, guys, that we keep this going. Eric Ball says, what's up, nasty? And then uh, J Van says, kind of bears are scary as shit. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Try setting multiple kind of bear 220s at night, in the dark, half asleep, jacked up on caffeine, and running the line by yourself at 2 o'clock in the morning. Trust me, I know. Cold weather, snow, slippery, cold, they all are scary as hell. But there are methods for counter bear traps, Jay Van, that uh, uh, there, there's safety items you can use on them. There's, there's the tong setters, there's uh, safety catches, there's multiple different methods of safeties. And on your bigger kind of bears, like your 220 that's right there, they have J-hooks on the springs that are, in a way, a safety as well. The more safeties and safety items you can have on that trap, especially if trapping by yourself, the better off you're going to be. Yeah, I know, buddy. I've been trying to dodge the freeze-ups. There's been freeze-ups on this all evening. Um, but I think I've dodged most of them. Connor says, what's up, Dan? Uh, Kevin says, howdy, trap nasty. Eric Ball says, uh, uh, Jay Van says, do they make a setter tool for counter bears? Yes. Many, many different types of setter tools. That one's a manual setter tool. If you set a lot of them with that, I'm going to upgrade this one uh, next season or maybe later this season. They make ones that actually have like a ratcheting style. Where as you grip it and set the setter, it like has teeth and it will not lock and it'll lock in place. So you don't have to continually hold it. So you can like click, 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 click. And then you can let go of it and it locks itself. It locks the springs in place on the setter. It has a lock that locks the handles compressed. Um, I want to upgrade. This is an entry level. This is like 11, 12, 13 bucks. The other ones are, you know, 50, 60, 70 bucks. But I'm running more and more Conda Bear 220s and bucket sets than I ever have. And when you're setting 10, 15, 20, starting your line and doing resets and cold weather, and this becomes a hassle. But, you know, that, that'll, get you, that'll get you your basic line and get you working on it and upgrading time. But, yes, they do have better ones. They have, they're called trap tines. That's technically what the setter tool is called, yes. And uh, Buyer Boy says that I'm leaving out the coil spring and long spring leg hole traps. Yes, I did. Buyer Boy's outdoors. Again, this is very, very basic to get you on. This is your, your basic, basic, just getting into trapping. Um, and we know that you and I both know, being experienced here, that your... DP sets and your counter bear sets done with buckets, place them in the ground. It's the easiest way to get somebody catching. 
when you start talking about long spring traps, coil spring traps, and foothold traps, um, you know, the the method of set. I, I will bring those up in future videos for sure. But this is this is for the person that has never attempted trapping, but wants to trap to get them on their first critters easily. Um, uh, Jacob says, uh, Dan's doing the, these two traps on purpose. He's explaining the bare minimums to get guys started. Yes. Thanks for explaining that. I didn't catch that until after, um, uh, uh, Cooper says, tell the newbies about the DP set tool. I already went over the set tools for both the DP traps and the Conor Bear traps. Okay. Bumping back down the, uh, I'm getting dropouts like crazy too. Bad signals and stuff. Um. J Van says I'm gonna to have to get a setting tool. My hands are too weak to set the counter bears. Yep. J Van says a pansy is a guy who can't set a one ten counter bear. I can, but the setter tool is the the way to go, buddy. And there, there, you know, it's not being a pansy to set a one ten counter bear. I mean, I, I've seen, you know, I've seen guys take the counter bear three thirties and set those springs by hand. I mean, whatever, man. It's not a muscle contest here. And when you're setting multiples, why not make it easy? and Keep it enjoyable, guys. Who are you trying to impress? The person that's trapping with you? Usually, you're trapping by yourself anyway. I'm getting low on battery here, guys. Okay, I got a little bit of life left. Um, Buyer Boys Outdoors says FNT has the first has the first cut knife that is nine buff wonders. Yep. Yeah. Um, FNT Fur Traders. Yes, J Van. That's a good place to get your uh, your trapping supplies and items from. Um, I'm gonna scroll comments, guys. I have a pocket knife with one of those zippers on it. Yep, cool. Uh, keeps you from nicking the guts. Yep. Uh, Jacob says when you skin, you don't cut down the belly. No, you do. Well, depends on species on on your. Uh, Coons and your possums? No, you do not. Uh, J Van says yes. I've seen some coon skinning where you cut across the back legs, one side to the other. I don't exactly know how you deal with the butthole area. Uh, I, I've got a really detailed instructional video, J Van, on my YouTube channel, Mad Nasty Trapping, on uh, about 40, 45 minutes. An insanely long time to get you guys can on skinning a coon, and I've got it on my YouTube channel. Take a look at it. Uh, Kevin says it's called tube skinning. Yes. Um, Jacob says watch Dirty Dan's videos. Yes, do it. Come on, Jacob. This is an instructional, informative video here, guys. Uh, just talking about different methods of skinning. Uh, Jay Van says, good night, everybody. It's past my bedtime. Later, buddy. And, uh, stay tuned for few old glory custom rods. Finally, you made it. Um, Jacob says, great video, bud. You will have the new guys starting in the right path. Thanks for the positive comments, Jacob. I appreciate it. Ashley Compton's in the house. Um... Jacob's still in here. Kevin, Ashley, and Old Glory Custom Rods, man. Um, thanks for the kind words, man. He says, absolutely love this feed, bro. You know, I informative as possible. So you guys that want to come into this sport, you've seen trapping, you've watched it on YouTube, and you want to know the basics. I'm just checking my battery here. You want to know the basics to get started? Realize that trapping is fairly easy to get into. It's very addictive. You will spend a lot of money on this sport 
and get very little in return because the market is on such a downturn in 2018. And it has been crashing out since like the late 70s when the market was actually fairly good. But there's a fairly big expense to going from start to finish in your fur trapping. But that entry-level expense can be an entry-level expense by keeping the product cost down starting out with entry-level materials, entry-level items and products. They work and upgrade over time. Unless you got deep pockets, if you got deep pockets, buy the best of the best, read reviews, and spend mega bucks. Just realize you ain't going to get it back in the fur auction. Keep it fun, you know, and don't spend all your money doing it. <laughs> um, so, uh, Jacob says, Dan, you did an absolutely fantastic job. Looking forward to your next installment. Thank you, Jacob. I appreciate it, man. Uh, an old glory custom rods LLC says better than video games though. Absolutely. Hey, this is how it's done. This is the bare bones basics. Trust me. I've gone way overboard guys. Stretching boards, stretching wires, uh, other trapping materials and supplies. Uh, most of my traps are out in the woods right now, but I got, I got traps over here, guys. I got tons. I got bucket sets, flushing boards, uh, cabinet full of baits and lures. Michael Taylor of Taylor's Baits, Lures, and Trapping Supplies. Using your product this year and I'm having good success on it. Look them up, guys. Support a family-owned tradition business. And buy your products from Michael Taylor. It's good stuff and it works. So I got a cabinet right there full of baits and lures. This is all my uh, supplies and stuff, all my knives and, you know, catalogs, da-da-da. Everything else I need is right in there. And again, guys, I got, you know, traps, 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 traps hanging from the ceiling. Traps, 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 boards and boards. I got a little bit of everything in here. It's easy to get addicted. So... That's how it is, guys. I'm about ready to lose battery here. But uh, my name is Dan Edwards with Mad Nasty Trapping. You can see me right here on YouTube channel, Mad Nasty Trapping. You can get me on Facebook Messenger if I have not answered your questions in enough detail or you have questions that didn't pop up on here. Hit me up on Facebook Messenger under Dan Edwards. Look me up on Facebook, Dan Edwards. You can find me on the Instagram and the Twitter, Mad Nasty Trapping. And you can get me on Snapchat, Mad Nasty Trap In, no G. Mad Nasty Trap In, no G. Why? Because they wouldn't let me. <laughs> but I don't give a shit. I love Snapchat and Snapchatting all you motherfuckers. Anyways. Hit that subscribe and the notification bell on my YouTube channel. Hook me the hell up. And I will see you with the next installment sooner than you think. Share this broadcast and hook me up, guys, because I just spent an hour of my time showing love to the newbies.